very familiar scripture. But I want to read it tonight with a new thought. And I want to try to get you to look at it with a new thought tonight. Psalm 51. I had a brand new experience with the Lord today. Pay close attention. Verse 10. The psalmist was saying, David, he said, now I, I want you to pay close attention to this. You say, I know this front and back like I do the back of my hand. The psalmist said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and ta take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors their ways. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. And that's all I'm going to read. But let's read it again. Starting at verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And I'm going to stop right there this time. What do you think the psalmist was saying to the Lord? In saying all of that. If I would ask for a show of hands, I'm going to read some more in just a minute. Uh, we'll go back to St. John chapter 12 where Zach was Sunday. Zach sparked a thought there, but I didn't realize it till today. But if I would ask for a show of hands tonight, for all of those that's viewing by live stream, for all of those in the building, if I would ask for a show of hands that has, and I would ask you, if you've told the Lord that you love Him, I'm sure that everybody in the building would raise their hand and You'd say, well, sure, I told the Lord that I love you. If I went to ask for a show of hands, and I'd say, how many has asked the Lord or told the Lord that they need him? And everybody would raise their hand and say, I've told the Lord that I need him. I know you would. And I would say, I would ask the Lord, and I would ask you if you uh, ask the Lord to forgive you, you would say, yeah, I, I've asked the Lord to forgive me. And if I would ask for a show of hands, and I would say, have you asked the Lord to help you? And you say, oh yeah, plenty of times I've asked the Lord to help me. Listen to me. But there's a question. I've done something, I believe, for the first time in all of my Christian life, I've done something, I said something to the Lord, 
for the first time today, I believe, as well as I can remember, I said something to the Lord for the first time. I was driving down the highway, and uh, you know how when you get something on your mind and it consumes your mind, uh, whether it's stress or whether you're worried about something, and some people, you know, is able to block things out more than others. But uh, when I get a lot of things on my mind or different things on my mind, and it, uh, it consumes me, and, and I can't function. Zach and I was talking about this today, you know, whether we're worried about something, and some of you know some things that's going on with me, and I've had some different things going on. But it's consumed my mind. It's consumed me. And uh, yeah, I, I'm telling you, the enemy will use anything he can to defeat you. And as a preacher, the devil likes to occupy your mind so you can't meditate on the Word of God and be prepared to feed the flock. But today, I was driving down the road and I felt the peace of God come over me. It was just, uh, it was like rolling down the window over and air coming through the window. I felt, AJ, I felt it was a piece of God just like a breeze. I felt the peace of God come in. And it, it was like uh, the window was open on the other side, Brother Harold. And it felt like Mm, glory to God forevermore have. It felt like that the wind came through. It really didn't happen, but this is what it felt like to me. It felt like the wind came in through one window, cleared my mind, and took it out the other window. And when that happened, I got through uh, when it when it happened. Uh, I, a peace come over me, and I began to cry. I was driving down the highway, and I began to cry. And I said, for the first time in my Christian life that I could remember, I began to cry, and I said, Lord. I've missed you. I've missed you. Now you say, has, has anybody done that to the Lord before? Has anybody said, Lord, I've missed you. I've missed you. Zach, have you ever done that? I've missed you. Now I'm not talking about, hey, I prayed this morning. I prayed this morning. I done my Bible study last night. I prayed last night, Josh. But listen, there's difference in that. And that, that solemn relationship, you know what I'm talking about? That oneness with God. There's something about that, listen to me, that nothing else can replace. When I felt that peace of God, Karen, I said, Lord, I've missed you. And I kept saying it over and over, and I think I shared some of it with Tony today. And I kept saying over and over and over and over. And the more I said it, the more I went. And I thought in Psalm chapter, or John chapter 12. Let's go back over there and read that. I won't hold you long. But before we go over there, do you think the psalmist was saying there, Lord, 
I've missed you. Do you think Jessica and the psalmist may have been saying, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I've missed you. I've missed you. I've, listen, I've missed you. I've, I've missed that relationship that, listen, the things has clouded my mind. Things has allowed me to draw me, draw my mind away. He said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I got two different places I'm going to read to you. John 12 and John 20. And then we'll be finished for the night. But let's look at this for just a minute. Now I want to, I want to, I'm not going to try to reteach Zach's lesson, but I, I want to give you something to think about. Since six days before the Passover, okay, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Zach, you correct me if you feel I'm wrong. Verse 3. Mary took a pound of ointment of spider, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the odor of the ointment. So do you think she might have been saying, there's many different feelings there, but you think she might have been saying, Lord, I've missed you. Or I'm going to miss you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I've missed you. And I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. Now let's go over to chapter 20 real quick. I don't know if I'm the only one. And I don't think I am. I feel the presence of God here, and I know it flows from breast to breast. And I know we're in one mind tonight. But Tony, I want, listen to me. I want to be like that with you. Whatever it is, listen to me. There's things that happens that's out of our control. The Bible says, neither heights, depths, principalities, things present, or things to come can separate us from the love of God. But I'm telling you what, there's circumstances, there's circumstances, listen, can cloud our mind. And allow and, 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 and can separate us from being where we need to be with God. I don't, right? Is anybody else like me tonight? Yeah. Is anybody else like me tonight? Yeah. I don't like that, y'all. I don't like that. I want to be, I want, you know what happened when I got home? Listen, I know things was different. You know what happened? When I got out of the car, old Rudy was standing there. Listen, Rudy was standing there, and he was hunched like this. And he was a-jumping. He was a-jumping. He hadn't been there in a long time. He could tell a difference. And he was jumping around. And he started running around like, I missed you. I missed that. Glory. Glory to God. Praise the Lord forever. You say a dog don't know? Uh, don't tell me. How come they got them service dogs? They lead around and a dog can detect when somebody's about ready to have, have a seizure. Praise the Lord forever. I like to know. I, 
Maybe we ought to bring them to church. Yeah. Maybe they know when the Spirit's about ready to move. I'd like to get the Holy Ghost on my dog. Just see what he'd do then. He got on Ev's dog one time, didn't it, Ev? You don't believe me? I wish we'd have videoed that. That dog was down. We anointed and prayed over it. But it jumped and ran around, around, around. Like, praise the Lord. God healed it. Listen to me. Chapter 20. First day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark to the sepulchre and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Does, this, does, does verse 1 say anything about her carrying these spices or anything else? Don't say a thing, does it? Don't say about anything. She was by herself. Didn't have anything. She runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple. As best as I can figure it out, and some of the Bible scholars that I respect and trust, they say it was John, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. We know, know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, that other disciple and came to the sepulchre, and they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. He stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lag, yet went he not in. Then come with Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seen the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head. Not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then his disciples went away again to their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and seen the two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, for the body of Jesus had laid. I can't help but believe, church, that Jesus had those angels sit there because he knew that Mary Magdalene would be missing him. They say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. I know not where they have laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. Knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto her, Sir, thou art born in hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. <coughs> I don't know, but I can't help but believe. Just a sign that Mary missed him. Father, I come before you tonight. I don't know the hearts and minds, but I know you laid this on my heart for a reason. You touch somebody with more than one heart tonight. Somebody's missed you, Lord. Somebody's really missed you.
things that's happened that even out of the control, out of our control, Lord. Oh yeah, Zach. It's a lonely feeling, Lord, when we don't feel close to you. When we don't feel like, Lord, we're exactly where we want to be or where we have been or where we're used to be. Or used to be in them. Lord, I like that daily fellowship. I don't like it, Lord, when stuff's got my mind clouded and I'm worried, stressed out, Lord. And it comes between me and you. Hallelujah, forever. Lord, when that breeze blew by the day, Lord, and it seemed like my burden was lifted. Oh, Lord. Lord, you felt so close. You felt so near. I missed you, Lord. I missed you. How come I never told you that before? All the things that I've ever told you. Never told you, I missed you. I mean, how many times you've told me you missed me? hearts and lives right now. That's between you and them. I delivered what you put on my heart. So you go ahead and perform your work. You go ahead and minister, Lord, as you see fit. That's between you and each individual. As I sing this song, Lord, help folks to be receptive to you.
you that precious bleed.